Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial in HECRAS, and in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing 2D hydraulic property tables and Manning's end values. So, what you see on the screen here is the web page of the contents of this video lesson creating hydraulic property tables for 2D flow areas. These hydraulic property tables require the Manning's end value, and they are used for calculating the routing of water during 2D simulations. All right, what I have on the screen right now is my HEC RAS. As you can see, I have RAS Mapper open down below. And I also have a geometry file with the river sketched in. Let me turn off that terrain layer just so I can see the, the geometry a little better. Here's the river and the bank lines. I also have cross sections, a few cross sections sketched in right here, as well as a 2D flow area. Manning's end value and the hydraulic property tables are calculated by just doing a right click here on the 2D flow area. And then you're going to want to click on view 2D flow area properties. All right. So here are the properties table. What I need to do first is actually generate the grid. So I'm just going to go use 100 and 100 for the cell spacing of the computation points. Click on generate the computation points. I need to actually be in edit mode first. So let me click on edit mode and then, yeah, right click. 2D flow area editor. That's better. All right. So 100 by 100. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So generate. That's fine. And then I've got my stats over here. So I have the number of cells, average face length, average cell size, and so on. This is in English units. So we're looking at units of feet for length. And then down below here, I have properties for Manning's end value. So the Man default Manning's end value for this entire grid is set to 0 0.06. However, there are two other ways to set Manning's end values that I can think of, probably more. And that is using a land covered layer as well as a calibration region. So we're going to go ahead and check those out in just a moment. Also in this 2D flow editor box, we click this compute property table button if I want to compute the hydraulic properties tables. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right. So that went ahead and calculated, but that's using this default Manning's end value. And I may want to add a land cover layer or like I mentioned, a calibration region. So what I'm going to do here is close this dialog box. I'm going to make sure to stop the edits, say yes to save. And then at the project menu right here, I'm going to click on manage layer associations. And then what I need to do is I already have my base two geometry set to the terrain layer. So that's good. I also want to add a land cover layer and doing so will allow me to associate each land cover type with a Manning's end value. And then I can go ahead and make that assignment right here in this drop down. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and close this dialog box for the manage layer associations. And next, what I want to do here for my map layers is to create a new RAS layer, land cover layer. Before I do that, I want to make sure to zoom in on just the area that I want because I'm going to import a map layer that is the extents of this particular view. I'm going to use this particular view sort of as a mask to not include more data than I'm interested in. So with that set, I can go right click, create new RAS layer, land cover layer. Another way to add a land cover layer and see these same options is to go up to the project menu then click on create a new RAS layer. Here are my same options, land cover, soils, sediment, and so on. So I'm going to click on land cover layer. And now what it's doing is it's asking me to navigate to the land cover layer that I downloaded. Now I've already covered, uh, had a whole lesson on land classification classification layers and doing this particular step. That is lesson 67. I'll, I'll leave a link to that in this video description as well. So go ahead and check that out in this playlist. But what it does is it tells you to go to this MRLC consortium webpage. This is one of the links. And then if you want to download some land cover data, you can click on the, the menu, then click on data, click on download. And then what I did was I just put a check here in this CONUS for a continental United States data, wait for it to load. And then at the time of this recording, the 2023 data is the most recent. So I'd click download. It's a pretty big file, so I'm not going to do that now. I've already downloaded it. So to add that file, um, again, for the import extents, this is important to set the current view. Otherwise, you may be downloading a lot more data than you really need. So I'll click current view and then click on the plus button right here. And then what I'm going to do is navigate to that file. It's uh, 1.4 gigabytes, so it's pretty good size. It's this one right here. And then I'm just going to accept all the default settings. 
So I'll go ahead and click create. Okay, that was quick. Click close. And now it's asking me to associate this geometry to file with the land cover layer. I'm going to come back to this in just a moment after I assign Manning's end values to each land cover pipe. So here is the land cover layer. I'm going to toggle on map layers. So now in the background colors, I can see the different types of land covers. And to associate a land cover with a Manning's end value, I'm just going to go ahead and right click, edit land cover data table. And what I see here is the name of the land cover, the integer ID, as well as values for me to provide for Manning's N and percent impervious. You could either type in values or if you have them saved on your clipboard, you can just highlight the cells and click paste to paste them in. So these are the numbers I'm going to use. If you don't have an idea for which values to use, not a problem. There is another link in the 2D user's manual I found. Let's see, I'll leave this link in the video description as well. It's titled Creating Land Cover Manning's N and Percent Impervious. And at the very bottom of that page, we have a table of values for the land cover ID and then the range of Manning's N values. And then also a description of that kind of land cover if you're interested. All right, so let's go back to HECRAS. Now what I want to do is go back and make that assignment. So manage layer associations. Let me move this over here. Now for my base two geometry, I'm going to select land cover. And then for percent impervious, I could also select the land cover. All right. And then click close. That will save it. Now let's go ahead and recompute the hydraulic properties tables. So to do that, I will, uh, let's see, go to 2D flow area, right click, edit the geometry. Don't need to for want to forget that again. And then now we want a 2D flow area editor. So before we just used the default 0.06, but now we have that land cover layer that's overriding that default value. 0.06 would only be used in this situation if the land cover layer happened to have a Manning's value of 0.06 consequently, or if there was no data in the land cover layer for the area that we want to compute. Now, before clicking the compute properties table, I also wanted to mention these checkboxes. Composite Manning end values for cells and cell faces with more than one Manning's value can be calculated by checking on these checkboxes here. So spatially varied Manning's end value along the face and composite classification values in the cells. If we go back to the user's manual, the 2D TechRAS user's manual, uh, this is the first link again, and we scroll down. See right here, we have an equation for that composite Manning's end value, which appears to be weighted this p based on the wetted perimeter of either the cell face or the area in the case of a cell volume we're creating manning's composite manning n value for both the cell face which is the line or the cell itself which is an area all right so enough talking let's go ahead and compute the property table now that the property table has been computed for this mesh let's go ahead and check out some of the values so what I can do, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on, say, this cell right here, which looks like it has a couple different uh, colors, which means there's two different land covers. I'm going to go ahead and select that layer so now I can see what the values are. Yeah, so green right here is ID 95 with a Manning value of 0 0.03. And then this light blue has a Manning value of 0 0.08. Oh, that's open water. <laughs> All right, let's see. Here's green, 0 0.03. And then here's tan, 0 0.028 for woodlands. Okay, so some of my numbers might be a little off. That's not um, too important. I'm just demonstrating how it works. But what I want to do is click on 2D flow area, and then I'm going to right click on this cell and then come down here to plot property table. Each individual cell has its own hydraulic property table, which computes a volume versus elevation. So if I click on that, I now have the volume of that cell in cubic feet versus elevation. And then, so that's the plot. Here's the table. Now I have hundreds of different cells in this plot, so I could go ahead and click on the plot on the map, or what I could do is click on the different cells in this left table here. So this left table, um, let's see, it has almost 300 different cells. And what I'm seeing here is the perimeter one, that's the perimeter that I sketched out, that's the 2D flow area perimeter. And then the value here is the cell volume versus elevation. If I want to look at some other properties, I could change that to area versus elevation and click on a cell. I could uh, Manning's N versus elevation. Again, I'm looking at the plot here, but there's also a tab here for table data. So I can um, look at the different table data for each parameter for any other 2D flow area that I select. 
So this is for areas. Okay, I've toggled off the perimeters and highlighted 2D flow areas. Now you see I can highlight either the cell or the cell face. Right now I have this cell face highlighted, so I can right click, plot property table, and now I have different face parameters that I could plot, such as the profile. So along that face, which I defined as 100 feet in length, you can see zero to 100. You can see that uh, this happens to be the elevation. It increases from about 32 up to about 33 and a half. So I could do the same thing, look at the elevation of different cell faces, but the, the profile is not the only property. I can also look at elevation, volume, wetted perimeter, anything you're seeing in this drop down right here. All right, the last thing I wanted to demonstrate in this lesson, manually defining areas with specific Manning N values. So if I come down here to Manning's N within my geometry data and then right click, oh, so I was gonna say start editing. Looks like I'm already editing. And say for instance, I want my main channel to have a constant Manning's end value of 0.03. I can create an override area. I right, let's see, expanding this. Oh, calibration region is what it's called. Go ahead and start my edits. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch out an area between the two red bank lines. Something like that will be good. I'll double click Manning's region one, that's fine. I'll click okay. And now for each land use type, I go ahead and type in my Manning's end value that I wanna use right here. So maybe I want 0.03 for every single one, regardless of what the land cover type is. So I'll go ahead and do that, click OK, and then I can recalculate the hydraulic property table. One last thing the user's manual mentioned that I thought was worth repeating is right here, we see some results of a small channel that's probably 100 feet wide as it moves through a grid that is 500 foot by 500 foot. You can get away with using larger cell size mesh cells as long as the terrain data has enough detail. So like I mentioned, the cell size here, it says right down here, is 500 foot by 500 foot, but the underlying terrain grid is just two foot by two foot. So water will move through the channel portion of these cells because the details of the channel cross sections are contained within the cell faces and the elevation volume data is saved in the cell's hydraulic properties table. I'm back on 2D flow area. 2D flow area editor. If you don't compute the property table, that's fine. That uh, will be an automatic step when HECRAS runs a 2D unsteady flow analysis. All right, well, that's it for this lesson. What we talked about was the generating the hydraulic property table for a 2D flow mesh, as well as editing the Manning's end value that's required to make those calculations.